In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the capacitors on the main board of the Game Gear. Uh, the reason you would do this is if your uh, picture is very dull and if you turn your contrast up full you should be able to view the Game Gear at 90 degrees. If you have to tilt it to be able to see the screen then you need to replace the capacitors. Now there's several different versions of the main board. Um, one of the versions has a couple more capacitors than the other version. Um, if you can see there's two chips here and these are known as the ASCII chips. Um, there is a version that only has one ASCII chip but basically, these are your capacitors here, these little black squares with writing on them. On this board, there's only two on this side, one, two there. And on this side of the board, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on that side of the board. Okay, when you look at the back of the board here, you can see that these are the capacitors here and each capacitor is marked with its rating it has its microfarad rating and a voltage rating and it's marked with a plus and a minus so that's your negative and positive side you need to make sure you get that right when you're putting your new capacitor back in when you're buying your new capacitors you need to make sure you get your ratings the same as the one you're replacing. The most awkward one to replace is this one up here. and The legs of it are tucked in right beside this uh, transformer here. So it is reasonably awkward to get this desoldered. But not too hard to solder the new one in. <coughs> in my experience from fixing game gears. The most common capacitors for the screen felt are these two here. Now each of these capacitors has a designated number on the board. On this one it's C44 and C45, C standing for capacitor. So yeah, in my experience these two are the main causes of the dim screen. I have fixed several game gears just by replacing these two capa capacitors on their own. So I recommend you start with these two and ideally you want to replace all the capacitors on the board but I always start with these two because nine times out of ten replacing these two capacitors will sort out your problem. These main board capacitors are actually glued to the board as well as soldered by the legs so the first thing you need to do is to break the glue on each capacitor so I just use a little set of long nose pliers and you don't need much force to do this at all what you don't want to do is rip the legs off the solder points or you could completely ruin the game gear so if you just gently grab the capacitor and give it a little rock side to side and you hear the glue snapping. I'll just do this one as well and really it doesn't take any pressure at all to do that and once you have the glue snapped the capacitor will lift up on the legs so you need to go around all the capacitors and snap the glue on them or at least snap the glue on the capacitors you intend to replace so once you've broken the glue on the capacitors here you will see on this one here there's two legs here come out of the capacitor and are soldered down onto the board and it's the same configuration for all these capacitors so 
if you watched my last video on replacing the capacitors on the soundboard we'll do exactly the same thing we'll add a little bit of solder to each solder point first that helps to lower the melting point of the solder Yeah, just take your time, there's no rush, uh, the slower you do this, the more chance you have of not damaging anything. If you're doing it like this without taking the motherboard out of the casing, you need to watch you don't burn the edge of this casing with your soldering iron as you're going into the capacitors. It's very easy to, as you're concentrating on the capacitor, you don't notice that you're actually leaning against the plastic edge here. And if you do that, you've uh, basically ruined your case. Now that we've added a bit of solder to each of these solder points, we can go ahead and desolder this. So I grab it with a little pair of pliers again because uh, putting your fingers so close to the soldering iron is never a good idea because it does get warm so just one leg at a time just uh, melt the solder point and tilt the capacitor up a little bit and then move on to the other side and just work back and forward raising the capacitor up a little bit on each side until you get it free of the board. I can't stress enough how important it is to not pull too hard on this while you're doing it because uh, these little pads here are really fragile and if you try to pull this capacitor off before you've melted your solder you're just going to rip these pads straight off the board and then you'll have nothing to solder your new capacitor back into. And again, now that we have the capacitor removed, we just add a little blob of solder to each pad and that gives us a nice little uh, place to set the legs of the new capacitor in. All these capacitors can be found on eBay that's just where I buy mine. Um, I'm sure you can get them in the like of Maplin's or Radio Shack or wherever your local electronic supplier is. Um, these ones here that we're concentrating on at the minute are the hardest capacitors to find. Now they're marked on the capacitor. The original capacitor is marked R4750 volt. And after some research it, I figured out that it's actually a 0 0.7 ohms capacitor and 50 volts. So these are quite hard to find. Now I got these on eBay and I bought, I think it was 50 of them for a couple of pounds. So they're not expensive. So uh, if you're going to be doing this, you can't really just buy one capacitor unless you're going to the likes of Radio Shack. If you're buying these on eBay, you do need to buy 10, 20, 50 in a pack. But like I said, they're they're really cheap and you're always going to have spare capacitors to do these sort of fixes. So these ones are the hardest to get. And again, these are the ones that cause the majority of the problems. I mentioned this in my previous video, but I thought it was uh, a good idea to mention it again. Your capacitors have two legs, one is slightly longer than the other, and the capacitor itself has a grey stripe on it. The grey stripe indicates your negative leg, and the longer leg is your positive. 
So you will need to cut these legs off to uh, solder these in. Um, but just remember the grey stripe is your negative leg. And on the board each pad is marked with a plus and a minus. So it's really not hard to get them in the right way. So just here above this pad you can see a little tiny plus. So you would put your, the longer leg on there and the leg with the grey stripe goes into this one which is your negative. So now we'll go ahead and solder this new capacitor in here. So just again one leg at a time just melt your little blob of solder and let the leg sink into it. And same for the other side. And it's as simple as that. Now you may need to do a little bit of trial and error to get all these capacitors in beside each other. Some of them are quite close together. So if in doubt leave the legs of the capacitor a little bit longer and then you can wiggle it about and uh, work it around the other capacitors so they don't wind up laying on top of each other. So I'll just go ahead and desolder this second capacitor here. Again we'll just add a little bit of solder to the solder pad. So I've added a little bit of solder again to these pads before trying to desolder. It just uh, lowers the temperature, the melting temperature of the old solder and makes it that much easier to get these things off. So again I'm going to use my pliers to hold the capacitor and work on one side at a time. Just melt your solder and lift it up a wee tiny bit and then move across to the other side and do the same again and just work back and forward nice and gently, nice and slowly until you get your capacitor free. I'm really not pulling on this at all. I'm just uh, working it back and forward nice and gently and that's it free. So now we can go ahead and add a little uh, pool of solder on these pads. Not too much, you don't want the solder going everywhere and uh, bridging across to something else. So that's your two solder points here. Again, one is marked with a plus, so that's your positive side. It really doesn't matter how long you leave the legs on these things, just uh, make them as long as you need to. So on this one, if I put the capacitor in like this, it's going to be interfering with the other capacitor that we just replaced. So what I'll do is I can either make the legs really short so that it sits like that or I can leave them long and have it over the top of it. If you're putting it over the top you will need to put a bit of insulation tape over this capacitor to stop the two sets of legs bridging and shorting out. So I'm actually going to cut these legs nice and short and get it in just like that. The shorter you make these legs the more awkward it can be to solder these into place. You could always put the capacitor in this way but again you have another capacitor here which is going to interfere with. So like I said a little bit of trial and error to get these things into place so they're not interfering with each other. Your misses. You do have a bit of room to play with here. As you can see these capacitors aren't sitting completely flush. But as long as they're not sticking up straight up in the air you'll be okay. You do need them down a bit so that when you put the, the back half of the game gear on it doesn't interfere with the casing. So you just need to do the same thing for each of the capacitors on the, the main board here. Like I said before, this capacitor up here, the big long one, is a royal pain in the back side to desolder. Um, you do need to be very careful, you don't melt into this transformer here. 
a good way of doing it is you can break the glue on the, the capacitor and lift it up a bit and then get your soldering iron in underneath to desolder the pads. It doesn't matter if you melt the capacitor as long as you don't melt any of the components that are staying. So yeah, it does take a bit of work to get this off. But again, you need to take your time and make sure you don't rip this off the board or you could completely ruin the game gear altogether. When you're shopping for capacitors, the easiest thing to do is to pop your game gear open. Now this is an old board that I have here. Pop, up, pop open your game gear and mark down, make a list of the capacitors that you need because there is a few different variations of the board. Some boards have more capacitors than others. So like I said the easiest thing to do is to take the back off the game gear. You can see the board and uh, just go around the game, game gear. Each capacitor is marked. This one is 10 ohms and 6.3 volt. That one's the same. So just go around them and make a list. Now the two capacitors that I showed replacing in the video are marked R47. And what these are, if you search for R47 capacitor you'll not find anything. So they are a 0 0.47 microfarads and 50 volts. That's what you need to search for when looking for these two. The rest of them you should find no problem.